I bet after that last video, you're wondering, can't we go back to the polyenes and apply k vectors to quantify the MOs in those systems? Well, yes you can. And this video number four will show you how we can do it. Enjoy it. Now that we have some feeling for how k measures the number of nodes in solids, although we've just done our 1D solids to this point, let's quickly revisit the polyenes to see if now we can use this concept of k to plot the energy for those systems in terms of their k vector. So we know the sign changes of the atomic orbitals define the nodes and their average separation, and therefore the wavelength lambda. So we're going to take a look initially at a butadiene. We'll define our carbon-carbon distance here as a, and remember then that k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, and it's the number of full cycle wavelengths of our nodal repeat within one atom-atom separation. So let's move to butadiene. We've seen the molecular orbitals before. Now for our all bonding, where we're adding all of the pi orbitals in phase, there are no nodes, then k is equal to zero because there's an infinite wavelength. There are no nodes within the length of the molecule. Our most anti-bonding case for butadiene, where we go plus minus plus minus for the coefficients in the LCAO approach, now we can define a wavelength for that nodal repeat. Here it is, it's 2a, and therefore k is equal to pi over a. There is half of the full cycle wavelength lying within the atom-atom repeat distance. Let's work our way up from the bonding. The next most stable molecular orbital from before was plus plus minus minus with the nodal plane in the middle of the molecule. Now let's add the wavelength. Here, because our molecule is finite, we'll see that we don't get a complete repeat of the wavelength of the nodal repeat, but nonetheless we can still define a k vector. So here is the node, here is my wave, and only half of the wavelength lies within the molecule, so it's within 3a. So actually our wavelength is 6a. And so in this case, there is one-sixth of the wavelength lying within any given carbon-carbon separation. And we can figure that out here because we know 6a, it takes 6a for the entire wave to undergo a full cycle. And one-sixth of 2 pi is one-third pi over a. So our k vector is one-third pi over a. And finally, for my fourth and final MO, where we had two nodal planes coinciding with the sign change, in this case, if we add the repeating wave, we'll see lambda is 3a, so we get a complete repeat of the wavelength within the entire molecule whose length is 3a, and therefore my k vector is one-third of 2 pi over a, or just two-thirds pi over a. And so now that we've defined a k vector for each of these four MOs, now we can plot their energy we could quantify the energy using a particle in a box model. We won't bother with that here. We're going to plot the energy versus a k vector. We start off with zero, the most stable, at pi over a for the most anti-bonding. And now I've defined the k vector of my two other MOs, one-third pi over a and two-thirds pi over a, and I've added them here. And so we see the k vectors are equally spaced. And here I've just added our familiar now dispersion curve, but of course in this case it's not continuous. I only have four energy levels and there's a discrete energy difference between each one. So I don't have a continuous band. I have discrete levels that are equally spaced in K. We could go a little bit further. We talked briefly about a block wave previously for our 1D solids where we know this modulates the signs of the AOs, but we can also look at it in terms of modulating the amplitude of the atomic orbital contributions to the MOs. 
And so let's just look at that amplitude damping, if you like, that results from the block wave. Here I've drawn the four MOs again with the information that was on the previous slide with the waves for each one. For k equals zero and k pi over a, and the wave and the nodal planes, we don't need to do any damping. The amplitudes are well represented by this wave. But now let's go to uh, one third pi over a. So here are my constituent atomic orbitals that are going into this pi conjugation. Here is the wave I created for the nodal repeat. But now what we're going to do is close to the node, we're going to mediate the actual amplitude of the two atomic orbitals either side of it. We'll make those disappear and we'll replace them by that damped amplitude. And so this would be a picture of the resultant MO for this system as represented, if you like, by a block wave. So we can see that these two atomic orbitals here don't have a full contribution. And there's our nodal plane right in the middle. We can do the same thing for the two-thirds pi over A. Here's my undamped, as I'm calling them, AOs. Here's my block wave, my plane wave. And now I'll do the appropriate damping so we're going to minimize the amplitudes here and here. Let's have that dissolve away and be replaced by the damped block wave. And it would be as shown. Where are my nodal planes? Right there and there. Here's hexadiene. We won't go through it all again. But basically you can take all of the polyenes and rewrite their molecular orbitals and their nodal planes in terms of a k vector. So for hexadiene, I have six MOs. The bottom line is they're going to have equally spaced k vectors. And so if I plot the energy of each of these MOs versus k, going from the most bonding to the most anti-bonding at pi over a, then all of the intermediate levels, of which there are four, they'll be equally spaced with respect to k, so they'll be 0.2 pi over a, 0.4, 0.6, 0.8, etc. By going back to the polyenes, we can see this transition from discrete energy levels to a continuous band for a 1D solid. So here is my EK diagram for butadiene, where I've got four atoms that are conjugating, four discrete levels, equally spaced in K. Here's hexadiene, we're adding more in the middle. 12 carbon atoms, now we're filling in between the most bonding and anti-bonding with 10 equally spaced levels as a function of K. There's 20. And finally, our infinite 1D solid. Now we should be calling the MO's crystal orbitals. And so now I've got an infinite number of levels between the two, not 20, 12, or 6. And so hopefully this just illustrates how we can use this approach to define k vectors for polyenes, and hopefully it also gives a clear view of how we transition from discrete levels to that continuous band.